So now let's add to our theory ways in which droplets can be removed or infectious virions can be removed within the room in addition to ventilation and filtration effects that we've already described. So the primary way that can occur is simply by settling of the droplets. So we've already talked about the Stokes settling speed, which scales as the radius of the droplets squared. So basically larger droplets fall fairly quickly. Uh, and in fact, we've already discussed how they can fall to the ground in a fairly short time. It could be on the order of uh, minutes or less uh, for large droplets, such as those which are spewing out of your uh, throat when you cough or when you sneeze out of your nose. But uh, also the smaller aerosol droplets that we've already calculated can stay in the air for a very long time. So they settle much more slowly, but they do still settle. So we can try to see how this enters in. Uh, and the second topic is also deactivation. We've mentioned that the virus doesn't live forever. So the virions in these droplets uh, do need to find a target and get out of those droplets and into, the, into some healthy tissue to infect it uh, within a certain period of time. So there's a notion of a viral deactivation rate, which can also be a parameter in our models. Um, so if we now add those two effects to our existing model, I'll just keep rewriting our mass balance equation. Uh, and this is uh, the mass balance for the concentration of virions in the air. <clears throat> I've also used the terminology in chemical engineering, we're gonna call this kind of approximation the CSTR or the uh, continuously stirred tank reactor approximation. <clears throat> And now with all the effects we're including, it's starting to look more like actual modeling of chemical reactors and chemical plants by this method. So the mass balance tells me that the volume of the room times dc dt, or again c is the virion concentration per volume in the air, is the production rate p minus, and then we have a flux, which is a flow rate times a concentration. And there are several flow rates here. There's q, there's the, which is ventilation, there is filtration, which is PF, QF. And then we have now a new term, which I'll write in another color, plus uh, VSA. So that's the settling here. So the idea is in a well-mixed room, there's a complex flow profile, which is leading to the mixing by, by convection of the air. And you might say, well, okay, that flow is sort of very quickly carrying the particles up, carrying them down. But on average, the particles go down just as much as they go up. And if it's well mixed, then the particles essentially are sampling the whole space. And relative to that well mixed flow, which kind of averages to zero, they are slowly settling. And so a reasonable approximation is to say, well, the removal is basically happening with a flux rate, which is that velocity of falling times the area. That's how quickly sort of those particles are kind of falling through any horizontal surface you make relative to their kind of average uh, zero motion uh, from convective mixing, okay? So that's, <clears throat> this is the new effect of sedimentation. And then actually I will also add uh, to that uh, another new term, which is the deactivation. And so here we will also add uh, lambda V times the volume. So this is just saying that throughout the whole volume of the room, uh, there is a rate at which every virion is just slowly deactivating, that would be lambda V. Also, if you have any volumetric treatments of the air, such as chemical disinfectants or even UV light, uh, that may also slowly kill the bacteria, or excuse me, kill, uh, deactivate the virus or the virions uh, in the air with a term that goes like this. So I'll just mention that maybe briefly here. Uh, so lambda V is the virion deactivation rate. And well, if we look at TV, which we've talked about before, which is lambda V inverse, this is the, uh, the deactivation time. Uh, this thing has been measured to be of order one hour in some studies but also even greater than 16 hours in aerosol form in other studies for SARS-CoV-2. So uh, it could be potentially long. Also, what this could include 
effects such as I mentioned, UV light treatments, which might be sort of operating in a certain part of the room, but then the air kind of circulates and we're essentially treating, treating a significant part of the volume. It could also be chemical disinfectants. So there are various uh, chemicals that can be sprayed in the air, which are believed to essentially kill the virus or deactivate the virions, although they may cause other harmful uh, effects. Uh, and so it's not so widely used, but in principle, that would also appear in our simple model uh, lumped into lambda V. So let's put all these effects together now. So again, we haven't really changed the calculation much. We're just building it up and making it a little more complicated each time. Okay, so let's see here. So one thing we did with this equation is we divided both sides by V. Um, and so let me write this equation again uh, after such a division. That would be dc dt is equal to, well, there's a p over v. Um, but then we have over here, uh, well, we ha a q over v is, is, our, is our lambda. But notice all these things are essentially giving us a correction to lambda, the relaxation time. And actually, I should say this is a minus sign. So we get minus lambda, and I'll say lambda c just for the relaxation rate of the concentration field. So we can lump all these parameters, and we can write um, lambda c is, well, from the first one, q or v is lambda a. That's the air change rate of outdoor fresh air. There is pf lambda f, which is the uh, rate of filtration times the mass filtration, or the fil filter filtration efficiency, pf. And then we have another term, which we can write as, well, we have lambda v, that's an easy one. And then the sedimentation term is the one I want to focus on right now. That is vs, we can write as vs over h, where I've divided by v, and I'm writing v over a is h. So I'm writing h equals v over a. So if we have a rectangular box of a room, then h is the ceiling height. But this is some kind of effective uh, ceiling height, if it's not a perfect uh, box shape. But if you take the volume and divide by sort of the projected area of horizontal surfaces, then that's giving you a sense of the typical height, and that's the typical distance by which particles have to fall. Okay, and notice velocity is distance per time, so when I do Vs and divide by H, I am getting something with units of inverse time. So it's just like all the other lambdas, it is basically a rate uh, per something per time, okay? So this is the uh, concentration relaxation rate. I guess it would be the virion concentration in the air, which is relaxing at this rate, lambda c. And then we come back to solving the same simple ordinary differential equation that we've done all along. And the solution is just C of t is a steady state value times 1 minus e to the minus lambda c t, assuming uh, that you know, these are, th this, this thing is a constant for the moment. And also, we know that the Cs is um, p over v lambda c. So basically, if lambda c is high, if all these removal rates are high, then that makes Cs low. So the background concentration in the room is much smaller if these lambda rates are all high. Also, if the lambda rates are high, then the relaxation is very fast. So you very quickly get to the final uh, value. And so that's actually worth uh, sketching what that looks like. Um, so if I plot... Um, what is the concentration C um, as a function of time? We have here this kind of lambda C inverse is the uh, kind of overall concentration relaxation time. So it looks like an exponential relaxation to a value Cs. But I just want to emphasize what I just said kind of verbally looking at these equations is that as I vary lambda C, so if I have like a fast relaxation, let's say lambda C is a large value, then I start out kind of at the same rate, but I kind of saturate a lot faster and at a lower value. So if it's here, this is sort of fast lambda C. So if I increase lambda C relative to the blue curve, the whole thing comes down, but also re relaxes more quickly. 
On the other hand, if I have slow relaxation, because any of these processes here are slow, then I get something which kind of relaxes much more slowly and ends up at a higher value. So if, I'm, if someone is breathing infectious air out, exhaling the infected person, and there's only very slow processes in the room which are removing uh, that infectious air, then it's slow to build up, but it keeps building and building and building until it finally saturates. So this is basically whenever lambda C is not a large value or slower, you have a slow process, but it also builds up a lot higher. Okay. So this effect of lambda C is very important to keep in mind, especially because these parameters here are not necessarily constants. In particular, VS has a very strong dependence on size. So these different kind of saturation curves are at the very least, dependent on the size of the droplets that we're talking about. And there's not just one size. So we will come to that point. But why don't we um, still just think a little bit more about the calculation that we've done here um, with regard to the sedimenting droplets. So let me plug some numbers here into this. I've already done this earlier. And I'll just remind you that the sedimentation velocity um, is one millimeter a second for a three, mi three micron radius. So that kind of gives you a sense of what these numbers are. Um, and the radius comes in squared. So if I take a given radius r, if I want to know how it depends on r, it's r divided by um, about uh, 3 microns squared. So if you give me a different radius, then basically the, the sedimentation velocity uh, you know, depends on r that way. So it'll look something like this, where at, at uh, 3 microns, the value is one millimeter a second. Okay, so that's the scale we're talking about. Um, and so uh, an interesting question to ask is, how does the settling compare to the other values here? So basically, how big is this term relative to the others? Now, the most important one here really is the lambda A, because that's the overall ventilation in the system. We know that's a really important parameter. That was the first one that I presented to you. The other ones are kind of corrections that can be important, um, but only if you know maybe the virion is deactivating very quickly or if you have a very aggressive filtration system. But the thing you really want to think about is this lambda A. So uh, in particular, if Vs is bigger than uh, lambda A times H, then those droplets will settle uh, to the ground or to the flat, to maybe the tables or other flat surfaces uh, faster than removal by ventilation. So those are really the particles that will, those are the droplets that will sediment out, actually. Okay. Um, and so if we, and, and if we just want to estimate sort of what kind of size are we talking about here, well, if we uh, pick um, a lambda A, which is three inverse hours, so three ACH, that's sort of a typical kind of moderate ventilation rate. Um, and we take a typical room size, which maybe is something like maybe three meters. Um, it's maybe not quite that high, but maybe it's only one or two meters. But I'm just trying to get an overall sense here. When I plug that in, um, you can see this was three microns. And so when I kind of work out the units here, I'm left with um, 0.0. 0.03 millimeters per second, uh, which can also be written as 30 microns uh, per second. So that's a uh, typical speed above which uh, you know, particles will be sedimenting uh, to the ground. If I now convert that back to a radius, uh, then I'm finding that the, um, in order for this condition to hold, uh, that the rate, because V goes like R squared, I basically have to take a square root, so the r will be bigger than sort of three microns times the square root of 0.03, um, because that was already in microns here. Um, and that's going to give me um, 0.5 uh, microns. So basically, um, at this ventilation rate, the particles that fall to the ground faster than they're removed by ventilation are those that are larger than 0.5 micron radius or one micron diameter. So this is telling us that the submicron particles are truly aerosols and that they're really not going to make it to the ground before they even get swept away by the ventilation. 
and the rest of the time, they're all just floating around. And even the particles that are a bit bigger than this, maybe that are several microns, are still spending a significant amount of time swirling around the entire room, and they're not really reaching surfaces that quickly. And the typical lifetime of such droplets is they're emitted from the mouth, <clears throat> they swirl all around the room, reaching oftentimes every corner, and then eventually they leave through the ventilation system. Or in some cases, they sediment if they're a little bit larger than this number. So that's just important to keep in mind, the, the fate of the different droplets that are emitted by an infected person indoors. <clears throat>